Sri Lanka has gone very wrong. Mm -hmm. The Chinese have put in a huge amount of money. Mm -hmm. Huge amount of that money has been stolen. Mm -hmm. uh, and it didn't pan out. Mm -hmm. But the idea the Chinese are proposing mm -hmm. is prosperity. China, they've given $100 billion to Pakistan. Yeah, right? that's right. Yeah. And so, so they have a very clear vision about what they're trying to do. And it's a powerful, it's a powerful idea. It's not, uh, it doesn't have, it's not that it doesn't have a basis. Mm -hmm. But from our perspective, I think we need to have an idea that provides pros prosperity. Of course, there is, a, there is a defense angle to it, mm -hmm. but there has to be an economic angle to it. Right. And currently, I don't see the economic angle to it. So in, in you know. Our relationship with the United States, yeah, for example, yeah. uh, is hugely about defense. That's right. Yeah. It's, it's moving that way. Clearly. More and more. More and more. I mean, when we talk to the Americans and the Americans talk to us, we talk about defense. Yeah. We don't talk about, okay, how do we jointly create prosperity and create a democratic model mm -hmm. that can make people rich. And does that worry you? Worry me, yeah. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay, so on to, on to Ukraine and, that, and then I'll come to a final question before I open it, which is that, you know, the whole story of Ukraine when India kind of, as it were, refused to take a position. Um, spooked certainly the international media and strategic cir circles here, uh, and uh, because it w precisely for the reasons you have just mentioned that in the last ten to fifteen years India has been seen to be going closer to the U.S. and then for not actually signing on to the UN UN story, you know the UN um, amendment, well, not amendment, the UN uh, move, uh, you know it was seen well, you know what is India up to? Uh, and the word that was used in India was that, well, India doesn't really want this bipolarity. It's going to have a multipolar world. How do you read this? Is this a continuation of uh, Nehru's idea of non-alignment, which has been resurrected in certain kind of perverse ways again? Or is it... Uh, no, I, I, mean, don't, I, yeah. I don't think the government believes in Nehru's idea of non-alignment. Mm -hmm. But I think the government understood its constraints. Mm -hmm. And it understood clearly what the constraints were. And... Uh, I don't think they had much of a choice, myself, right? But, but I, think a, uh, I think it's better to have a foreign policy that is strategically thought out mm -hmm. instead of a foreign policy where you take one decision uh, with one event and then a suddenly another decision with another event, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I also don't think it's about uh, being, you know, with America or against America, That's right. mm -hmm. I think uh, it's more nuanced than that. I think India is a big country, mm -hmm. and India has uh, multiple relationships, and India has to deal with the complexity of its own reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so you know, I'm going to ask a slightly semi-personal question, and then I'm going to open the, the floor, which is because you know, obviously, 75 years, you know, we can take small bite sizes into the last opening decades and now more recent decades. But actually, there's a middle period. And we, you and I both belong to that middle period of that generation, which is that we are not midnight's children. We are born in the 70s. We don't have any of the optimism uh, that our parents' generation had. And we, of course, also grew up with a lot of collective violence around us. I in Punjab, but I was not alone. There were people in the Northeast, Kashmir. Uh, but also, uh, soon after that, you had the Hindu-Muslim story uh, flaring up with the Babri Masjid uh, mobilization and caste violence as well. So violence, you know, has been a kind of big feature of people of our generation. And in your case, it's all too personal. So, you know, we've just had a recent anniversary of your father's assassination this weekend. So my question really is about actually a kind of Gandhian question about uh, violence and how to live with it, and uh, in your case, it's also personal. And so could you sort of say a little bit on your own personal resilience on it, but also how you envision the compact between violence and nonviolence in Indian society? Uh, I think I mean, the word that comes to mind is, is forgiveness, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's, not, it's not precisely the, the most accurate. It's, it? 
you realize. Well, I think you realize, right? No, because you. you uh, I didn't mean to stump you, but it's, no, you a, very obvi it's a very no, obvious you question. You haven't stumped me. But I no just... one's asked you. I'm surprised. No, no, they've asked. They've have they? I'm not. <laughs> then why don't you have the? Why, because I'm, I'm why trying, don't I know I'm the trying answer? to go deeper in the answer. Okay, let's do this. Uh, so. I think in life, you will always, especially if you're in, in places where large energies are moving, mm -hmm. right? you will always get hurt. It's not, uh, if you do what I do, you will get hurt. It's not uh, a possibility, mm -hmm. it's a certainty. Mm -hmm. right? Because it's like, it's like swimming uh, in an in a ocean with uh, big waves, mm -hmm. right? You are going to go under. It's not, it's not that you're not, mm -hmm. right? So then when you go under, you learn how to react properly. Mm -hmm. So when you... When you uh, so loss is productive. Loss the, single, mm -hmm. the single biggest learning experience of my life was my father's death. There is no bigger experience than that, right? Now, I can look at it and say, uh, the person who, or the force that killed my father, mm -hmm. uh, caused me tremendous pain. Sure, it's correct. As a son, I lost my father, and many of you would have. And that's very painful. But then I can't get away from the fact that that same event also made me learn things that I would have never, ever learned otherwise. Right? Mm -hmm. So as long as you're ready to learn, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how nasty people are or how na evil people are, as long as you're ready to learn. Mm -hmm. If I turn around and you know, uh, Mr. Modi attacks me and I say, oh my God, he's so vicious, he's attacking me. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one way of looking at it. And the other way of looking at it is say, great, I just learned something from him. Mm -hmm. Give me some more. Okay. Very Gandhian. Uh, but now, yeah. You, you, no, but you, you come to this, right? When you're, when you're facing, uh, when you're facing an attack, you come to this. There is no, there is no other realization possible. Right. It's Thank like, it's like that there's, there's a poem, I, I don't remember the name. Um, it's written by, I think, I think it's a Palestinian person All right. who's been put in jail. Okay. I'll, I'll send it to you. Okay. And he's talking to the jailer. He's talking to the jailer, and the jailer, um, he says to the jailer, look, from the, from the small window of my cell, mm -hmm. I can see your big cell. Right. Right. So everyone's in jail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right. 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 And and you've got to be able to see that properly. Right. And if you see that properly, then you can figure out ways to deal with it or ways to get out. Well, thank you. Yeah. First. Of all.